If you're watching this video, you're probably interested or maybe want to learn a little bit more about the epoxy pipelining technology. So we're going to be going through the five main steps in detail with a lot of description and information so you can understand more about this process and check it out and it might be the right fix for your problem. There are five main steps or processes to any pipelining job. Number one is the camera inspection. Number two is cleaning and prepping the line. Number three is shooting the liner. Number four is curing the liner. And number five is reinstating or opening any lateral connections in that line. For step number one, the camera inspection. This is the most important part in the start of any project. Whether you have a commercial, residential, industrial property, a camera inspection has to be done in every sewer line. A lot of people ask us to give us some ballpark quotes, some generalized pricing information per foot on a pipelining project, and we can certainly do that. But the camera inspection allows us to get detailed specifics about the job. So what we're going to do is show up to the property and assess, of course, the logistics of what's going on. Where's the access to the pipe? How can we gain access to the pipe? But most importantly, when we put the camera down the pipe, we're going to assess the diameter, the dimension, and more importantly, the condition of the pipe and what's going on. A lot of times there's going to be root intrusion, heavy scale or buildup, and the camera looking inside that pipe allows us to gather that information. From there, that allows us to go ahead and put together a comprehensive price quote for you in writing so we can see if doing business together is the appropriate thing and if we can help you solve your problem. That's step one. Step two is the cleaning and prepping of the line. Like any construction project, you have to clean and prep that surface. You can't just go ahead and put a liner down a pipe that's not in great condition. So there's actually three phases or three different types of prep that go into cleaning that line. Hydro jetting, which think of as a really fancy pressure washer that's going to allow us to wash down the pipe. There is descaling, which a good way to think about that is a really fancy sander or a chainsaw for inside the pipe. When there's cast iron or clay, you've got a lot of roots, a lot of scale buildup. We're going to want to go ahead and mill or get those out of the pipe, and that's what the descaling machine is for. And the final step is hydro vacuum. Think of when we're prepping a line. We're down there creating all this loose debris. It needs somewhere to go. So we're going to hook up a really cool vacuum system that's going to go on the end of that pipe, and we're going to suck out or remove all that debris that we just created and loosened from that descale or jetting process. So these are the three steps that we take to clean the pipe. And again, much like any construction project, you've got to clean it first before we can go ahead and insert our liner. Step three, we're now on to the formal lining process. We've cleaned the line. We've got all dimensions. Now we're ready to shoot the liner. First, we're going to do is take our felt sock. We're going to impregnate it with a liquid epoxy resin. From there, we're going to load it into our drum, fill it up with air, and physically shoot it down the line. This is where our measurements from the camera inspection have come into play. We've got our exact distance. We know if we're dealing with a 4-inch, a 6-inch, an 8-inch, whatever the diameter of the pipe is. We're physically inserting and putting that liner in the pipe. Next, we're going to blow that liner up with air, and this is going to allow it to take shape. Imagine your line has a few bends or curves in it. There's a 45 degree angle, a 22, maybe a 90 degree angle. Again, your pipe is turning under the ground. Filling up with air while, during that shooting process allows it to take that shape in those turns. And now you have a new pipe inside your old pipe. Step four is definitely the coolest and most high tech version and step of what we do. And that's curing the liner. There's many different versions of lining materials and lining chemicals that you have. You can have an ambient cure, which is faster or slower. But we at Royal Flush do probably 95% of our jobs with ultraviolet light curing technology. So a couple of analogies I use for a lot of people is if anybody's been to the dentist recently and gotten a cavity, they shine a little blue light on your tooth, that has a reaction with that gel, turns to a rock. Also, any ladies out there, if you get your nails done, a really cool process now is they put your hands underneath the light and that cures your nail polish. Same exact technology that we use when we're curing a pipe. So we've went ahead and shot our liner down the pipe. It has a liquid epoxy resin in it. We've blown it up to the shape of the pipe. Now we're going to insert a UV ultraviolet light head. Basically, a really fancy light bulb. We're going to push it to the end of the pipe. We're going to set it to a computer program based on the dimension of that pipe and the length. And it's going to slowly pull back at the right speed. Those lights are then going to have an instant chemical reaction with the epoxy resin that's in there and turn it to a rock. That's what gives us our final hardened version of your epoxy liner or your new pipe inside your old pipe. This without a doubt is the coolest technology that we have. How it works, the speed that it works at, it's really cool to work with and see. The fifth and final step of the lining process is the reinstatement or the reopening of a lateral connection. Now this can be a little confusing and a little detailed, but bear with me because it's actually pretty cool how it works. Imagine this, we've just lined your pipe under the ground and you have a connection that Y's or T's off. Now when we're inserting our liner, it's going to go ahead and cover or temporarily cover that connection. 
So imagine this line picks up your bathroom sinks and your toilets, but this line picks up a different section of the house. It's going to be temporarily blocked right there by our liner. So what we do, we go in with a really cool robotic cutting tool. Think of this as a fancy Dremel or a grinding machine. We're going to send that down the pipe, identify that lateral connection, and we're going to physically grind this out. This is going to allow us to what we call reinstate that flow or ensure that this pipe can now flow inside the other pipe. Again, the reinstatement or the opening of lateral connections is extremely important because if that's missed, you're going to have an issue with a sink or a toilet that's going to back up instantaneously. So in conclusion, no matter how big or small the project is, if this is a nuclear power plant or a 500 square foot house, the process for every lining project is still the same. Step number one, we're going to go in and conduct a camera inspection to gather all the information for the job. Step number two, we're going to clean and prep that pipe to make sure there's nothing left in there and the line is ready to go. Step number three, we're going to shoot the liner down the pipe. Step number four, we're going to cure it probably with our ultraviolet light technology. And step number five, we're going to open up any lateral connections or reinstate anything to ensure there's full flow. If you learn anything from this video or you like what you see, check out our website, royalflushpipelining.com. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook to check out some more of our videos and content. Give us a call if we can ever help you out.